Hello designers, welcome to the next part in our tutorial series where we are learning about how to apply images as planes, PNG images to be precise, and how you can place the PNGs on top of the surfaces of your car. So in the last video, we learned about how to UV unwrap graphic design onto your car, and that's what we're seeing here from the last video. So today we're gonna to be working on this blank car right here on the side. And I'm gonna show you how do you bring in images into the workspace? How do you set it up so that it can get stuck onto the car surface? And also how do you ensure that if it's a PNG with a clear background, a transparent background, you don't see the background. Now for the latest version of Blender, when you bring in a PNG, it might automatically hide the transparent background, but in some cases, you might still see like a white or black background. So to avoid seeing any white or black backgrounds, we need to set up Blender so that PNGs appear with transparent background, otherwise known as alpha. When something is transparent, we call it having an alpha. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to come here to the right panel in our Blender and we're gonna click the camera icon right here, okay? These are the render properties. And before you get started, just make sure that your ambient occlusion is turned on. You can turn on Bloom if you like. It gives us really nice shiny quality to the render. And turn on volumetric shadows if you want volumetric lighting. Just take note that when you turn these on, your computer might get a bit laggy. It depends on how powerful your computer is. So those are all turned on. Under screen space reflections, if you expand it, just make sure that refraction is turned on and half res trace is turned off. Okay, so that sets up our document to show alphas. So how do we bring in an image to test and see if it works? Well, in Blender, it's already pre-installed as one of the add-ons, but it's not activated yet. So you need to activate the add-on. So we go to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, you just type in on the search here, Images. And as you can see, it finds the Import, Export, import images as planes. Just make sure that's checked and then it instantly gets activated and then you can close. So now just as we normally add an object to the scene with shift A, you can see that we have image here and image as planes. If we click that, it's going to ask what is the image. So let's take a PNG image that I downloaded from the internet. For example, here I, I search shell logo PNG. I made sure I clicked tools, size, large. I always want to get high res images. And then depending on the website, you can download the PNG. So just to show you how it works, I'm going to click this one and I'm going to go to the website. Don't right click and save this image because actually it's not a PNG. You'll get the white background. So just come to the website. Most of these are normally free and you just click download and you can download the PNG file. As indicated in this image, when you see a checker pattern, in all design software, that means that there is a transparent background. This is not a color, it's empty. Okay, so we're gonna hop back into Blender and I'm just going to choose one of the PNGs I downloaded. So this one right here. So it's coming to the scene. Uh, if you notice, you can't see right now, that's because I've turned off all my guidelines. So I'm gonna turn them back on by clicking this button. So now my grid comes back. You can see that the image is right here highlighted. All my lights have come back. This is just a really quick way to show and hide the guides. Okay, so my image is right here, it's selected. I'm going to push G and move it along the X axis to bring it right here. And look at that, you can see that the white background does not appear. It's actually come in as a PNG. Fantastic. So I'm going to bring this up, G, Z. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right here for this demonstration. So G, X. I'm going to go to my top view so I'm in a nice view. This time I'm just going to hold G because I'm in top view. And I'm just gonna place it right here, maybe scale it down with S, right about there. And what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to get it as close to the surface as possible. So I'm gonna drag this down and it clips through. So I'm gonna bring it back up here, just as close as you can. Okay, so it's not on the surface itself, it's just hovering above. So now we're gonna play with modifiers. To access the modifiers, we come to this spanner tool right here. We're going to click it. And as you can see, we can add a modifier. The first modifier we're going to add is called a subdivision surface. We're going to choose simple. And I'm just going to increase this to the max six right here. So what we've done is actually we've created extra lines and edges and geometry for this image. That's because it actually has to curve along this surface 
And if you don't do a subdivision, this is just a nice flat rectangle. So it won't take the shape because it doesn't have that data to get modified. Okay, so because we have a subdivision surface here and it's a modifier, we can now add other modifiers in sequence underneath this one. So the subdivision comes first. What we're going to add next is a shrink wrap. So here's a shrink wrap modifier. I'm going to choose the target, just clicking this eyedropper and being very careful to make sure I choose the right surface. I'm going to click this. And look how the image has suddenly attached itself to the surface of the car. And it's also slightly bent because we added that subdivision surface. So there's more data for it to bend. Now it's merging with the surface a little bit. So you're getting some artifact. So we're going to come back here to the modifier and we're going to increase the offset just ever so slightly. I'm clicking and dragging until we lose those artifacts and it looks nice and clean. So if you're really happy with the placement, you can actually go ahead and apply these modifiers, but you have to apply them in sequence. So we're going to apply the subdivision by clicking this down arrow and clicking apply, and then this apply next. So now this change has become permanent. Sometimes you don't want to apply modifiers. You can actually just leave them active. So you can always come back and edit the qualities of this object. So this is called non-destructive modifying. This is what makes Blender so powerful. It's actually all these modifiers that you can add to objects without actually making them permanent. So you can always go back and tweak things later on. So there you go. We've added a PNG image onto the surface of the car. Let's add another one. Shift A, image, image is plain. Let's choose this one. G, X, you just move it around like any other object because it comes in as a plane. G, Z, let's rotate it, R, 90 on the Z. Let's go to top view to get our alignment. Scale it down. Just have to push G here. And then G, Z. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right on the spin. So just as close as possible. Add modifier. Subdivision surface. Simple, increase to six, just to see there's, this is the difference between simple and cat mode. So simple makes it look the same. Then add shrink wrap, choose the target, which is this object right here, and just offset it slightly. Let's zoom in so we can have a good look at that. We're going to sort of increase the offset by dragging. There we go. Nice. I'm going to choose that, top view. Shift D to duplicate along the X axis. So I push X. R 180 on the Z. Enter. So very simply, that's how you shrink wrap PNG images onto the surface of your model. So you can go ahead and get crazy with it. Just make sure that when you're in Google image searching for PNGs, you actually type in PNG and make sure that you download it from the website so that it comes in with a transparent background. Sometimes Google Images shows you this image, but it's not really a PNG. When you save it, it will have this white background. So you always have to go into the website and down. All right, good luck adding PNG images to your car, otherwise known as decals. Thanks for watching.